Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Neil Walder for Kit Guru. This motherboard is the Super Micro Super O C7 Z370 CG IW. What a mouthful. Super O is like ROG is to a Zeus. Uh, so it's a gaming brand of Super Micro, a company known for its workstation and server motherboards. And this is its first mini ITX gaming motherboard. Uh, so we're in new territory here. Uh, some reviews of this motherboard came out actually a few months ago on a beta bias. Uh, subsequently, the beta bias was updated uh, a couple of times, actually went through version 1.1. This is now in version 1.2 of the bias. So we are at a proper release uh, stage for this hardware. Uh, and we're going to take a closer look and see what we think of it. Moving in closer, this actually tells you a reasonable amount about this motherboard. Uh, so for a start, you've got 12 LEDs on the underside of the board. So this is the edge away from the IO panel. If the board's upright inside the case, looking through your glass or whatever panel, uh, the LEDs are firing across the case towards the front. Uh, they're arranged in groups. They're controlled by this software, which is Super O Booster from Super O. Uh, we have got the ability to set a profile, uh, OC scenario. You can see my CPU is a 6-core Core i7-8700K uh, running at stock clocks. Uh, and there's further details about the CPU and what the various cores are doing. This essentially is reflecting the BIOS. We have memory, which is the first of a couple of sort of minor annoyances with this uh, motherboard. Uh, so this memory is from G Skillet Sniper X and it is 3600 rated uh, and CAS 19. And you can see there that XMP is indeed enabled and that should have bumped the speed up to 3600. The timings there, CAS 19 and such like are all absolutely fine. But in fact, it's running at 3333 megahertz, which is wrong. Voltage is correct. So uh, XMP has not worked correctly. Thermal allows you to set two fan curves. There are two fan headers on this motherboard. Voltage is again reporting what's going on basically in the BIOS, but you can change your settings here should you choose and it will then apply them, it'll restart it. So it's really um, just a Windows based version of working the BIOS. And Luminous is setting your lights. There we go. And now they've changed somewhat. And now they've changed again. And again. And again. All very nice, quite good fun. And then BIOS update allows you to update the BIOS from within Windows. I actually found it was easier updating within Windows than it was in the BIOS itself, because in the BIOS you have to have a, a flash drive uh, formatted to FAT. Uh, in Windows you can do what the heck you like. There you go, you've got control software, you've got lights, all looking pretty good. When it comes to performance, and we'll do a quick run of Cinebench R15, the Supermicro does a perfectly decent job. We're looking here for a score between 1300 and 1400 marks. So Core i7 Coffee Lake, uh, the G-Skill memory, we've got an EVGA GTX 1080 Ti graphics card, not that matters for this CPU test. Uh, we've also got a Seasonic Prime Titanium 1000 watt power supply. Uh, really top-notch hardware, and the score comes out quite soon as he says playing for time 1350 so no problems whatsoever that's absolutely fine let's run blender clear them in maxes and render so this is an actual proper piece of software that is actually working the CPU kind of legitimately. So here we have the CPU speeds, 3.8, 4.3, various cores bouncing around. It should be sitting there rock solid, you would expect at 4.3 gigahertz, and it just isn't. You can see that quite clearly. Power is just a fraction under 95 watts. That's significant. That's the problem here. The problem is that the Supermicro BIOS is limiting the performance of the CPU. And it's limiting it for a an interesting reason. Within the BIOS, Supermicro has done something I have never seen a motherboard manufacturer do in my years of dealing with uh, ASUS, ASRock, ABIT, Chaintech, Epox, MSI, uh, the list goes on. I mean, there have been a lot of motherboard manufacturers over the years. Uh, and if we switch over to advanced mode and we go to CPU and we go to CPU overclocking, 
and we see here, look, this is the thing, the base clock is, you, you'll notice that they've done this in uh, thousandths, thousandths of a megahertz, but that's 10,000, that would suggest it's 10. I think there's a zero missing there. Never mind, because if a thing was running at one tenth of the correct speed, we'd know. Uh, here's the thing, okay, so here's what the cores are doing. This is the business about, you know, ratio overrides. We see this and every enthusiast bias, nothing to see there, is this, okay? It's power limit override 95,000. So one thousandth of that is 95 watts. Uh, and that is the TDP rating of the Coffee Lake processor. What Supermicro has done is they have believed Intel. That's what they've done. Uh, I've, I've checked this with Supermicro. They said, sure. I mean, obviously with a K processor, an unlocked processor, we basically uh, assume that the enthusiast will want to dive in and change settings. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, all the rest of the bias is entirely conventional stuff. Here's the XMP enabled, which hasn't worked, which meant that me, uh, I've got 3333 frequency there, and it's locked because it's XMP has obviously gone slightly wrong, hence the 3333. Uh, all this other, this is all conventional stuff. That is the bit that is throwing me somewhat. We're just going to change these power figures here from 95,000 to 135,000, picking a number that is bigger than 95. In actual fact, this CPU wants around uh, 115 watts, but more than 95 is really all we're aiming to do here. And then we do F4, save and exit setup, which is what I uh, first came across when uh, when I built that monster system in the Corsair 1000D, which had this uh, super micro board in the mini ITX down the bottom. Uh, and I got involved in the bias of that then. Uh, why not F4? I mean, everybody uses F10. They use what F7 would be for updating the BIOS or easy mode or some such, but there's always F numbers that are never used. Why not F4? So here we are in Windows. We've got Blender open again. We've got HW Monitor open at the moment. The processor cores are bouncing around 4.3, 4.4 gigahertz, but it's essentially idling. We click render. And we've got 4.3 gigahertz and we've got 100. 15, 116 watts, temperature at the moment, high 60s. So we're a million miles away from any CPU throttling is the point. This is just stock clocks. This is allowing the turbo boost to do its thing. And 4.3 gigahertz is exactly what you'd expect a standard Coffee Lake uh, 8700K to do in this scenario. This is now behaving entirely normally. The point is 115 watts is what you require, not 95. Intel it's just, they're not being straight, but we know that. The curious thing is, Supermicro didn't seem to know that. I consider that Supermicro has made two distinct, relatively minor errors uh, so far in this review. The first is that XMP doesn't work correctly on this 3600 megahertz memory. The second is they set the power limit too low for the CPU. Neither is a killer problem. Uh, both are easily fixed. The power limit, if you take the idea that uh, it's a uh, K processor, therefore dive in and do it yourself, you lazy swine. Well, okie dokie. I mean, if you bought a K processor, are you going to run the thing at stock clocks or are you going to go straight for overclocking? A fair point. If you do go for a uh, manual overclocking within the BIOS, they actually have a set of uh, preset profiles. Uh, so you can just simply uh, select a speed from the drop down. Uh, I went for, I tried five gigahertz. This CPU certainly does five gigahertz. It probably does 5.1 the good day. Uh, five didn't work dropped back to 4.8 gigahertz. It was stable all cores, and that was 1.35-ish volts, uh, which is a tad less than you, I, I normally get brutal and go for 1.4. Um, so if you choose an overclocking profile, it behaves perfectly. My point here is Supermicro does things differently. So come in closer and I'll take you around some of those little details that are done different. The big points are conventional. So we have the 8-pin EPS connector goes to the head of the board. 24 pin goes to the side. Mini ITX, so only two memory uh, uh, slots. That's no great surprise. Release the graphics card. It's got a latch, away that comes. Voila. Let's take the board off. Obviously I've changed out the uh, hold down plate. 
because I'm using the uh, liquid cooler rather than uh, using the stock uh, mechanism. And here we have it. So what catches my eye as uh, unconventional? Well, for one thing, you've got a series of jumpers and headers uh, below the uh, PCI Express slot. Now, the question of will you use a graphics card and a mini ITX board, I think is entirely fair. On the other hand, this is an enthusiast gaming card, therefore common sense is graphics card. Any graphics card overshadows those jumpers. Therefore, by definition, uh, that's either annoying, silly, or or something else. For development work, no problem, but once your, gra once your PC's installed, I mean, they're just out of sight. The funny thing is one of those is labeled as OC, and the idea is that you can uh, connect, uh, if you set the BIOS correctly, you can connect uh, to that using a cable and a switch. I mean, goodness knows where they go to, and then it feeds away. Um, but how that would work, I do not know. You will have noticed there is no SSD. Uh, that's because this is one M.2 slot there, that's the retention point there. I've put my Samsung 860 in the second slot on the back. Just did it for fun, really. I could have used either, chose to use that one. Uh, the other thing that really caught my eye as a uh, weird and wacky, uh, front panel headers, it's that thing there. That pair of pins is the power connector and the second pair in is reset. And believe you me, getting in there with a screwdriver to fiddle that to uh, jump it, uh, yeah, that's not great fun. Um, the rest of the board, in fairness, is fairly conventional. I mean, you've got USB, USB 3, four SATA arranged upright. I mean, do you really need six SATA on a mini ITX? I don't think so. So the fact there aren't the fifth and the sixth, not the least bit fussed about. The rest of it's all good stuff. A uh, nice clean layout. And then we've got a four plus two uh, voltage regulator uh, mechanism. And if we just pull off the uh, heat sink. So it's this little aluminum heat sink here. Just two screws, actual screws, not pop pins. Not a massive heatsink, but perfectly acceptable. It's got a reasonable amount of surface area. It's not just a block, so uh, it's not thinned as such, but it does have some surface area. The Voltage hardware, it's a new one on me, uh, made by MPS, or Monolithic Power Systems. Never heard of them before. The six stages are all 50 amp stages, so that's 200 for the uh, V-Core, and then 100 for the chipset and graphics should you be using. You can use the graphics, but again, enthusiast gaming doesn't really tie in, does it? Uh, and in fairness to Supermicro, way to use the graphics, you do get uh, both HDMI and and display port, so proper graphics connectors, uh, which I like to see. Uh, HDMI on its own says to me, no thank you, not really. Um, so on the one hand done right, on the other hand, but are you ever gonna use them? Uh, we've got a, a four USB 3s, we've got a USB 3.1, both type A, type C, we've got audio, we've got uh, ethernet, which is Intel, and we've got Realtek Wi-Fi, AC Wi-Fi. Uh, so all the features present and correct, uh, it's a nicely made board. I mean, it's a quality bit of hardware. There's absolutely no denying that. Uh, I like what I'm seeing. I'm personally not won over by the Super O logo. I mean, Super Micro to me is a name. Super O almost seems like they're trying too hard. But nonetheless, it's good kit and uh, Mini ITX can be a swine to lay out correctly. And they've done a decent job. But believe you me, those front panel headers, you need to refer to the, uh, where is it? Yeah. You need to refer to the user guide to get that right, otherwise you won't guess not in a million years. This is an interesting motherboard. I mean, it has an horrendous model code. I'm gonna say it one more time. Supermicro, Super O, C7, Z370, CGIW. I mean, ugh. Uh, but there we have it. Once we get beyond that, however, Interesting, good bit of kit, uh, has a couple of quirks, which as I said before, could be easily uh, sorted out with a BIOS update. I'm, I'm certain they could be easily updated. Uh, it's interesting to see that Supermicro is tackling gaming motherboards in the Supermicro way rather than in the ASUS, ASRock, MSI, Gigabyte way. Uh, they do what they do, this is different, in much the same way that EVGA does things in its own way. Uh, and that's good. I mean, after all, what's the point in having I suppose a sixth company joining the throng if they're just gonna be a copy of all the others. The pricing for this motherboard is a penny under 150 pounds, 149 pounds, something like that, uh, which is quite expensive, $200 in the US. So it's not cheap, neither is it brutally expensive, uh, but you have to have a reason to want to buy it. Uh, and 
I can't see any standout features other than it's super micro. I know super micro, I trust super micro, I'm going with super micro. Uh, for example, the fact they're using monolithic power systems VRMs, which I've never heard of before, let alone seen. So I have no idea if they're good, bad or indifferent. I have to say the look and the feel suggests good, but you know, we have sometimes been suckered by, uh, by products in the past. Uh, I would be amazed if it's not good hardware, but I have nothing to go on. So I just don't know. Uh, so <laughs> it puts me in a slightly curious position. I would like to strongly recommend this motherboard, but right now I don't know. Until more people have used products from Supermicro in the uh, desktop and gaming uh, area, who knows? Uh, having said that, there's other bits and pieces I am familiar with, you know, the, the layout, the IO panel and so on and so forth, all of which fills me with, with confidence. Uh, a certain amount of confidence. Also, it is quite clear Supermicro prefers to err on the side of caution when it comes to power. In my test figures, I'm comparing with various other motherboards I've used in the past with the Coffee Lake processor, and performance of this is slightly down on those Taiwanese motherboards, but uh, power consumption is way down. I'm talking about once I up to the 95 watt limit. So Supermicro appears to go light on core voltage, uh, and the result is uh, Efficient would be the best way of describing it. Uh, it is also quite curious to note uh, to me that when initially the board simply was not running at the correct speed because it was being throttled by the 95 watts of power uh, set in that limit in the BIOS, it didn't actually hurt performance a huge amount. Uh, you could see, for example, in Blender, you, you could tell the difference, but it wasn't night and day, not by a long chalk. And that was a surprise to me because I've never sort of deliberately throttled um, a high-end processor before. But this time I have kind of inadvertently before I then unlocked it. And it's surprising, the, the extra bit of speed didn't actually make a massive amount of difference. We tend to focus on what speed can we run at four, uh, when we're overclocking, 4.8, 4.95, 5.1 5 gigahertz, for example, because it's it's a number, it sounds better. Five is better than 4.9. And the truth is, when you're actually analyzing frame rates and such like, it doesn't tend to have a massive difference. It tends to be more subtle. So it'd be your minimum frame rates are boosted. Anyway, enough flannel and waffle. Uh, it's a decent piece of kit. There are a couple of quirks. The front panel header pins, as said before, these jumpers on the bottom below the graphics slot, which are out of sight, the, the bias layout is a little unusual, not terrible. Uh, the fact you have to constantly just check what you're doing, so F4 to save, for things like that, you know, real small details. The uh, software is good, uh, it, it, and it, it reflects the bias accurately, which I like. Uh, sometimes you get utilities and they're just different. Um, sometimes you get utilities that differ, uh, some suites of software from some other board manufacturers. It's like three different people devised uh, three different looks. Um, it, it can get exasperating. In this instance, you get the impression either it's a really small team that developed that software, or they made damn sure it looked the same as it might have been the same people, of course. Uh, either way, the Super o Booster software and the BIOS, they are a united whole, and that's good to see. Good piece of kit. Price is absolutely in the ballpark for a performance mini ITX uh, board. Like it. Clearly room for improvement, but really encouraging. And once Supermicro sorted out those little wrinkles I've mentioned more than once, uh, if they could just come up with some slightly more catchy and easy to say model code, I'd appreciate that, that would be nice. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from Kit Guru, click to subscribe. Uh, hit the bell button, we'll tell you about more videos as they become available. I'm Leo Wood for Kit Guru. This is the, once again, Supermicro Super O C7Z370 CGIW.